Hello everyone, this is Adelaide Eternal and you're with Sarvan McClinton. Welcome to our 7 minute 7 point series. Here we're going to overview a selection of Australian Highlander archetypes to assist Aussies with deck selection and also for our overseas viewers to learn a little bit more about the 7 point Highlander format. You can also visit Oz Eternal, the link is in the description below, for more information on the format and on the full list of pointed cards. So in this overview, we will snapshot a few different decks, which will be useful for those who are starting out in Highlander for the first time, just to give you an idea of some of the deck types that you might like to build and experiment with according to your playstyle. But also for experienced players, this might also be useful regarding switching decks or just learning a little bit more about the decks hidden in this diverse metagame. So if you are interested in any particular archetype, just comment below with the name of the deck and we'll do a follow-up 7 minute 7 point deck tech on that particular list for you. Let's jump into some of the Highlander archetypes and in no particular order, starting with the premier blue-red control deck, Blue Moon. So Blue Moon... Your goal is to try and control the game via Back to Basics, Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon. These cards lock your opponent out of the game and it allows you to then stop them from getting back in the game with big spells like Cryptic Command and Mystic Confluence and other good counter spells that give you value. Uh, you can lock up the game as well by using threats like True Name Nemesis or Vendillion Click, Thing in the Ice, even Torrential Gear Hulk. These are really good powerful game ending threats. Our four colour combo deck of choice today to talk about is the Protean Hulk combo deck. So this particular deck focuses around uh, a combo with Protean Hulk, Body Double, Revelark, Viscerasia to sacrifice your creatures to, and uh, you can protect this combo as well by using Fluster Storm and Pact of Negation. You can preemptively protect your combo via Thought Seize and Inquisition of Kozilek. You can also just play the mid-range game plan. So sometimes you can finish. Uh, a game with Titania and a swarm of 5-3 tokens. So on to another deck. This is the Jeskai Tempo deck. It's a blue-white-red tempo focusing around three drops like Brimaz, King of Areskos, and Geist of St. Traft. You also have small beaters in that come in before those three drops. Things like Stoneforge Mystic that get you quite a bit of value via a Batterskull or an Imazawa's Jitter. And then the premier blue threat being True Name Nemesis, and we've also got Vendelian Click in the air too. All of this tempo can be backed up by counter spells that keep your opponent off balance, like Daze and Mental Misstep. And you can also finish off the game with a big four minor planeswalker like Ajani Vengeant or Elspeth Knight Errant. So we also have another mid-range deck here, affectionately referred to as Jundam, if you're familiar with that reference. And it's a black, red, green deck that focuses as well around its land base. So we have Strip Mine and Wasteland to keep your opponent off balance, but you've also got the Grove of the Burn Willows plus the Punishing Fire package, which you'll be familiar with from Legacy Lands. There's also iconic Jund style value cards like Bloodbraid Elf, and you can also use Tireless Tracker as well as a good uh, land-based value card. Huntmaster of the Fells and Titania again come in there to finish off the job, and you can preemptively disrupt your opponent with hand disruption like Inquisition of Kozilek, Thought Seize, Him to Turak, and then there's the card advantage package with Painful Truths, Sylvan Library, and of course Life from the Loam getting back multiple lands just like its Green Cestral Recall nickname. On to another deck, Storm, prevalent in many formats, but it's actually extremely strong in Highlander 2. So your finisher is Tendrils of Agony, but you can also have finishers out from the sideboard, things like Empty the Warrens. Generally, because it's a Highlander format, you have to struggle to find all of the correct uh, mana producing and card drawing spells, but the points are fundamentally the most powerful of the two. We have Yorgmoth's Will to obviously draw through the deck, power out rituals, and essentially win the game on the spot, and we have Black Lotus to fuel that too. So other broken mana productions include Lotus Petal and Lion's Eye Diamond Lotus Bloom, and it also uses, because it can't afford it in the points, the unpointed tutors. So we have tutors like Grim Tutor and Bring to Light, and a pseudo-tutor in Doomsday, which can also finish the game on the spot. 
On to a completely different style of deck, we have the Naya Aggro deck. So this is a red, green, and white small creature and burn deck, and it's affectionately called Zoo. You will be familiar with it in Old Extended. Uh, we use Strip Mine and Wasteland to keep our opponent's mana base uh, out of here so that we can actually uh, finish the game with a whole bunch of one drops like Curd Ape, Wild Nacaddle, and Loam Lion, and Goblin Guide. These all come down on turn one to apply pressure. And if you can't finish it with these guys and Tarmogoyf, you can also gain value through Skull Clamp, or you can just burn your opponent out for the last few points of damage via Lightning Helix, Boros Charm. Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, and all the iconic burn spells. Curse Scroll is especially good in the control matchup, allowing you some inevitability. So these are the decks that we decided to feature today. There'll be more decks in the follow-up video. We try to cover a whole variety of different decks each video. Stay tuned for more. If you're interested in any of the decks that we have featured here for a full 7 minute 7 point deck tech, name the deck list in the video comments below and we'll get it right back to you. Thanks for listening guys.